back to Empower In. I'm Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So I had a situation that happened the other day and I thought it was really interesting and I thought you would benefit from it um, because it involves a medication that we get and it also involves some math. So I thought that we could talk about it a little bit. But basically, I had a patient that was on a med surge slash tele unit. So that means that we admit patients on the cardiac monitor, but only if it's ordered. Otherwise, they can be med surge, which means without a cardiac monitor. So basically, this patient was admitted for di um, diarrhea, but her labs were pretty stable, so they just put her on a med surge order. So she was admitted under med surge without a heart. Uh, heart monitor and basically what happened was she we took some stool samples and it came back positive for C. diff which is Clostridium difficile and what happened was this all happened first thing in the morning and the gastroenterologist was there and he went in to see the patient and he told her that she was positive for C. difficile and or C. diff, sorry. And so what happened was I went in there right after the doctor left and I was getting her vital signs and she was very, very anxious and very nervous and I was taking her blood pressure at the time and I was just trying to talk to her and just tell her, you know, we have treatments for this and just kind of trying to comfort her. Like we see this a lot, like, you know, it is, it is a serious infection but it's something that we can treat. And I was basically just trying to help her relax. When I got her blood pressure and heart rate though, I was like, oh my gosh, her blood pressure was around 110 over 60 and her heart rate was 170, which that's really high. Your heart rate should be lower than 100 at all times. So I was like, oh my gosh, this can't be right. And I hadn't gotten her pulse oximeter at that time. So I put the um, little probe on her finger and I was looking at her heart rate and her oxygen saturation. And her heart rate was going anywhere from 160 to 180. So I was like, wow, is this new? Like nobody told me about this in report. So I pulled up my computer and I looked and it was new. Her previous blood pressure was taken about two hours ago and it was like 130s over 60s and her heart rate was in the 80s. So this was completely new. So right away I called the doctor um, stat and I just called her internal medicine doctor. That's all she had ordered besides the gastroenterologist and the gastroenterologist doesn't have anything to do with the heart. So I called the internal medicine doctor and he thankfully called me back right away. And if you'll notice right then, okay, so there's two things that I could have done. I could have called a rapid response or a medical response team. So when you're in the hospital, they have teams to call when a patient becomes unstable. So I had to basically make a nurse judgment at that time. And I wanted to know if my patient was stable versus unstable. Now this can be kind of tricky, um, but what you're doing is you're looking at subjective information and you're looking at objective information. So my subject information is I'm asking the patient what they are feeling. So I'm asking her, okay, are you having and, or actually the first thing you're looking at is level of consciousness, but that's kind of objective too. But anyway, she was alert and oriented and she was talking to me just fine. And so I'm asking her, are you experiencing any dizziness? Are you having any pain anywhere? Because what you're looking for is signs of hypoperfusion because if her heart is beating so fast, she's probably not being perfused properly. So one of the major signs of low or hypoperfusion is chest pain because if your heart is not getting the right amount of blood, it's not getting the right amount of oxygen. So that could cause a heart attack or basically cells in your heart dying. That's what a heart attack is. So she denied all of that. And the only thing that I had was her blood pressure had dropped 20 millimeters of mercury from the systolic. So it went from 130 to 110, but that's not critical. So I decided to call the doctor and the doctor ordered a cardiology consult. So I called the cardiologist right away and all this time I'm checking the patient's um, blood pressure and heart rate. I'm trying to do it every five minutes, um, mainly because she was also so nervous. So I thought, you know, if she's also this nervous, then she's, I feel like at risk to become more unstable faster. So because, you know, her, orientation with her nerves is also being kind of probably affected because if you are having hypoperfusion to the brain, then you can become very anxious. So I'm just watching her very closely, but thankfully the cardiologist was actually in house. So the cardiologist came to see her right away. He was in the room within four minutes 
and they had a relationship together. It was her cardiologist, so it worked out easier. And he basically said, you know, okay, her heart rate's really fast. Um, let's put her obviously on the heart monitor. Um, actually at that point, my charge nurse had already gotten a heart monitor and we were just going to get the order from the doctor, which we knew the doctor was gonna give us an order for him. So he ordered her to be put on a heart monitor. And at that point, we also had a um, portable monitor in there checking her heart rate as well, which was showing between 160 and 180 and it looked like it was a thin. So the doctor ordered a medication called Cardizem, also known as Diltiazem, and he ordered for it to be run at 10 milligrams per hour. So we're gonna work that problem out. Okay, so whenever we're starting out a question like this, we always want to know what our ordered was. And like the doctor said, he ordered 10 milligrams of Cardizem IV per hour. So that's what he would order. And so we go order equals 10 milligrams per hour. Now, what we also need to know is what we have on hand. On hand will change um, basically from facility to facility. So what I received from pharmacy was Cardizem 100 100 milligrams in one hour. Sorry, 100 milligrams per 100 mLs, okay? So it's basically a one-to-one -one solution. So it's one milligram per one mL. Now, what we need to know is we need to know how many milliliters per hour. Now I know you might be able to work this out in your head, but it's good to get used to using dimensional analysis because sometimes it's not always this easy. So since we are, or the only thing we really know is that we need to give 10, 10 milligrams over one hour, okay? So with dimensional analysis, we always need to consider our need to eliminate. So we need to have milligrams down here. And what do we have? We have 100 milligrams, and then it's over 100 mLs. So you will see that what we want is mLs per hour, and that's what we have right here. And then you just cancel these like figures out. And then you cross multiply. So 10 times 100 is 1,000. And that's going to be milliliters. And then 1 times 100 is 100. And that's going to be hours. And then you divide that and you get, so 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. So we're going to run the drip at 10 milliliters per hour. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed making this video for you and sharing my experience with you. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please share this video and this channel with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. All right, love you, bye.